Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. We continue uh, a series of problems which I have kind of gathered together under one roof called Mass Plus and Problems. So today we will solve a couple of four actually um, so called arithmetic problems. Well, I call them arithmetic because there are numbers involved. Um, so again, I will continue using this logic, arithmetic, algebra as a general um, kind of title of the series of problems related to either of these particular areas of mathematics. Um, they will not be presented in any particular order um, because basically they are not related to each other. It's not like I'm trying to put some educational material in certain sequence because I'm using something which I have already covered before in the subsequent lecture. No, these are completely separate so you can just take them in any sequence you would like. But they are um, uh, gathered together inside this unisor.com website under the uh, course name Mass Plus and Problems. Okay, so today I will talk about a few arithmetic problems, just because there are some numbers involved. So, problem number one. Okay, so there are a certain number of pieces of paper. Um, sometimes it's presented as concrete, like ten number of pieces. Now, um, I will just use any number, and I'll just use as an M. So there are n uh, pieces of paper. Okay. So what we did, we took some of these pieces, let's say K1, and each of it cut into n pieces. Then whatever remains, all these pieces of paper, original, which I did cut, which I didn't cut, whatever. Again, it's a group of um, set of pieces of paper. I took again some of them, let's say K2, and each of them cut into, again, N pieces. And I continue this process a certain number of times. So, after that, I will have a lot of pieces of paper, let's say capital N. What I would like to prove is that N minus N has a number. So total number of pieces minus initial number of pieces. So basically the number of pieces which I have incremented. That this is divisible by N minus 1. Okay, now as usual, um, I recommend to pause the video and try to solve this problem yourself. By the way, these problems are really simple, no problem, no, no difficulties in them. Um, and then, after you have solved or didn't, sol didn't solve it, um, continue with watching the lecture because you might have your own decision your own solution, you might listen to whatever I'm saying, plus there is a note for each lecture where I basically, like a textbook, I present the solution. Okay, um, how do we do it? All right, so let's start from the beginning. We have n pieces of paper. Now, if I took k1 of them and start cutting them, remains uncut would be n minus k1. Now, the k1, I cut each one of them in n pieces, which means I add k1 times n. So that's basically the result after the first operation. Let's call it n1. Okay, now n2, next step. What did I do? I took whatever the number of pieces I have, which is n1, 
took k2 minus of them, which means I left n1 minus k2 uncut, but I added, since I divided each one of those k2 into n pieces, I added this one. So that's total number of pieces, which is equal to, okay, um, n1 minus k2 times n minus 1. By the way, I didn't specify this, n minus k1 times n minus 1. If you factor out k1, that's what we will have, right? Is that right? Plus. Plus. Sorry. Okay. Which is equal to n1, I know what it is. So it's n plus k1 times n minus 1 plus k2 minus 1. N minus one equals N plus K one plus K two N minus one. Right? So just look at some kind of a um, a, a hint. Under the, uh, after the first cut, I have this. After the second cut, I have this. Now, it's very easy to prove by induction. And I'm not going to do it because it's really very easy and you can do it yourself. That after, let's say, S steps like this, my result would be N plus K plus 1 plus 2 plus KS times N minus 1. Because every time I cut, I have to subtract k s, let's say, and add k s times n. And the formula will be continuing. These k will be added to each other. From which follows that n s, which is basically the total number after s steps, which I am just using the letter n, minus n would be divisible by n minus 1, which was supposed to be proven. So again, simple step to prove by induction that this formula would be correct is really simple, so I'm not really wasting time. What's important is I'm offering these problems after a substantial course of mathematics has been covered, while I'm not using all the apparatus, maybe, which uh, we have learned during the theoretical part, which was, which was, which was called Mass for Teens. I, I'm, I'm not really using here, at least, these simple problems, but I still, it's important to to, to go through these problems after you have learned a lot of theories because your mind is already prepared to logic, to creativity, to analytical thinking, etc. So the problem solving is very important, but you have to have the foundation, you have to have the background, theoretical background, to be able to basically understand what this problem is all about. Okay, second problem. Okay, let's say uh, one person decides to think about some kind of a number from 0 to 1000. Another person is supposed to find out what this number is by asking questions which can be answered by the first person only as yes or no. So I cannot really ask what number do you think about because the person cannot answer. The person can answer only yes or no, which means I have to really ask many questions 
uh, to find out the number. So the problem is, what's the smallest number of questions uh, which can be actually asked about this? Well, I can offer the way which is actually the smallest, but it's not easy to prove that this is the smallest number of questions. That I will probably leave to you to think about it, because it's not trivial at all. Um, however, the method itself I will definitely present right now. Um, in, uh, it's actually used in, in many computer pro 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 programs which are related to search algorithms. So in many cases, the way how we search for something is to use something which is called binary division. So, what's the binary, binary division in this particular case? Well, you just ask, is the number in the upper half or in the lower part of this range? So, let's say, is it greater than 500? Well, there are two answers, yes or no. If yes, so I know it's greater than 500, so it's between 501 and 1000. Again, I divide the whole uh, interval in half. I'm asking if it's greater than 750. Now, if it's n, if, it's, I, if I answer no, which means it's less than 500, which means it's, now in this case, it's in 500 or 1 and 1000. In this case, it's between 0 and uh, 500. So I divide it by half and I'm as asking is it greater than 250? Now in this case, if yes, it means it's 751, 1000. If no, that means it's between 501 and 750. You see, in each case I reduce the interval, so in this case it would be um, from 0 to 250, no, vice versa, from 251 to 500, and this way will be 0 to 250. So on each step I divide basically the interval in half and reduce my choice obviously in half. So how many times I have to do it? Well how many times you can divide 1000 in, in 2? Well 1000 is 2 to the 10th degree, a little bit less. 2 to the 10th degree is 1024. So by no more than 10 steps, I will divide down to one single uh, number. Maybe less, but basically, I mean, it, it depends, but basically it's about, it's about 10. Now, what's the more mathematical equivalent of this? Well, the more mathematical equivalent is this. Instead of thinking about this number as a decimal number, think about this as a binary number. And again, the theoretical part of the course, Mass for Teens, covered what is a binary system. So, the number can be represented as 0 and 1. So, what I am basically asking is, in a binary representation of number which you are thinking about, is the first digit 1? Well, if it's yes, then it's 1. If it's not, it's 0. So basically, I already um, determined the first binary digit. So the only thing is, I'm asking to use all the 10 digits, uh, including leading 0, maybe. So, in exactly 10 questions, I will um, get a complete binary representation of this number. 
So again, 10. Um, now, again, I don't want to discuss right now the issue of why this is the shortest way to, to get to the number. Um, I would suggest you to, to do it yourself. And, uh, and that's a very interesting, actually, uh, part of the whole thing. You can send me an email, which is on every um, web page of the unisor.com. You can send me your thoughts, and I will share it with everybody. Okay, so that's my second point. Again, this binary division methodology is really very practical. It's used in many computer programs which are involved in some search algorithms. Okay. Given 100 numbers from 1 to 9 each one. So basically single digit numbers. 100 of them. Now if I will add them up together, well, what's the minimum? Minimum is all of them are ones, which is 100. What's the maximum? If all of them are nines, that would be 900. Now, in this particular case, uh, this number, this sum of these numbers is equal to 789. Now, my question is, can or cannot I choose uh, 70 numbers out of these 100 with their sum to be less than or equal to 500? So you see, this sum is closer to the maximum. So most numbers are large numbers. That's why I'm asking, is it possible from all those mostly large numbers to choose 70, which is much more than half, but with the sum, with sum less than 500? Is it possible or not? Well, it's a very simple thing. The question is very simply to answer. Look, if 70 numbers have a sum of less than 500, then the remaining 30 numbers should have sum greater than 289, right? Because the sum of both these 70 and these 30 is supposed to be 789. If 70 gives me less than 500, then the rest would give me this. But now let's think about what's the maximum sum if you have 30 numbers, each one of them is this. Well, that's 30 times 9. If all of them are 9s, which is 270, which is less than 289, which means we cannot accumulate sum which is greater than 289. Maximum is 270. So it's impossible to choose 70 numbers. These numbers are too big, and many big numbers closer to 9, like 7, 8, 9. These are most, most numbers are 7, 8, and 9, basically, right? So we cannot choose 70 numbers with the total sum of less than 500. Simple, right? Now, the last one is... more interesting, I would say. Okay. So this is the clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Now, we have twelve coins, and we put one single coin on each digit. Twelve coins put in twelve digits. Now, one move 
is to move two coins. One coin should be moved from the place where it is by one step clockwise and another coin uh, counterclockwise. So let's say if I will make this move. So this coin will be here. And this coin will be here. And these places will be empty. Now, obviously I can move them around in many different ways, whatever I want. My question is, can I gather all the coins on one particular number? Let's say on 12, but it doesn't really matter which one. Can I, get, can I get them together, all these 12 coins, into one particular step? Now in this case, for instance, next step can be I7 move here, so I have three coins, and uh, five move here, and I have two, three coins here. Now I can move then this one to here, let's say, and this one to here. It's two, it's one now. Then again I move this to this, this will be four, and I move this to this. So, will be here, something like this. So in any case, I'm moving coins around. Can I get them together? like four in this case, can I get all 12 together in one particular um, number? Well, the answer is no, and here is a proof. What I will do is I will calculate something which I called the value of the position. Coins are in some position. There are a certain number of coins for each number. So what I will do is, let's say at number 1 I have K1 coins, at number 2 I have K2, etc. So I will do is, I will multiply the number itself by number of coins associated with this number. Plus 2 times K2, plus etc, plus 12 times K12. I call it the value of the position. So, how this value is changing when I make a move. Okay. If I move from this to this one coin, which means it's uh, changing position from number 6 to number 5, I reduce by one number of coins here, and I add one number of coins here. So the value of position will be changed by minus 6 plus 5, so it's minus 1. Right? So whenever I'm moving counterclockwise, I'm changing to by minus one. Or the only exception is if I move from one to twelve, then it's plus eleven. So it's either this or this. At the same time, what happens if I move clockwise? Well, obviously, usually I am adding one, or if I am moving from 12 to 1, I am subtracting 11. So, what is the result? The result of this is, if I am making two moves, if I'm making two moves. Um, there are different combinations here. If it's this combination, then I do not change the value at all, right? One coin will lose the value, another will, will subtract the value, another will add to the value, value remains the same. If I'm doing this, So one coin would be plus 11, another coin would be minus 11, 
will result in the value change and nothing's changing. The value is not changing. Okay, what if I'm doing this? Well, then the value is changing by 12. So, either I have no change or value will be subtracted 12 or if I'm doing these two moves the value will be added 12. So the value is either not changing or subtracting 12 or adding 12. Okay, fine. Now, what if all my coins are in the same place? All 12 of them. Let's say it's on 4. What's the value of this position? Well, it's 4 times 12. So no, no matter where my 12 coins are collected, on which number, I will always have this number times 12. So the value which I'm looking for should be divisible by 12. It should be equal to 6 by 12, or 10 by 12, or 3 by 12, whatever it is. Can it be obtained? Now, what's my initial value? Initial value is 1 times 1. We have one coin on each number, right? So 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 12 times 1, which is 78. 78 is not multiple of 12. But on every move, I'm either adding 12 or subtracting 12 or don't change the value at all, which means that I always add or 12 or add or, or subtract 12 or don't change the value. So it's always multiple of 12 which is subtracted or added to this number. Now this is multiple of 12. This is not multiple of 12 and I'm adding or subtracting either 0 or m multiple of 12 on each step. I cannot get from here number which is multiple of 12. I can always... Uh, so what's the multiple of 12? It's 72, right? So 6 would be always extra. I will not be able to come from a number which is not multiple of 12 using steps which are multiple step mu multiple of 12 to get to the number which is which is multiple of 12 and that's the proof that this is impossible to do so yeah, i cannot gather all si all 12 uh, coins on the same number together okay now what i suggest you to do is read notes for this lecture they are presented on unisor.com you go to the course called Math uh, uh, Plus and Problems. And this is the problems which are in lecture called Arithmetic 01. So you choose Arithmetic Topic, and then Arithmetic 01 would be the first lecture, actually, on this topic. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.